If you're looking to create animated captions in DaVinci Resolve using the CaptionCat extension, this tutorial will walk you through the process step by step. Let's get started. The CaptionCat workflow has three simple steps. First, create the caption text on the subtitle track. This is where you can fine-tune your text and fix any typos. Second, apply a CaptionCat template by dragging one of its customizable presets onto a video track. You can tweak fonts, colors and how much text is displayed at once. Step 3. Sync the text to the template with a single click, bringing your subtitle track into the design. These steps are flexible. If you spot a typo later, you can fix it in the subtitle track and reapply it to the template without hassle. Now let's dive into the details of each step. To create a subtitle track from your audio, start by selecting Timeline – Create Subtitles from Audio in the Resolve menu. This utilizes Resolve's built-in transcription tool, which offers excellent speed and accuracy for English texts. However, Resolve's support for other languages is limited. If the results are unsatisfactory, you can switch to CaptionCat's transcription feature. CaptionCat uses Whisper, a powerful transcription tool developed by OpenAI, the creators of ChatGPT. Unlike Resolve's transcription, which supports only 15 languages, Whisper supports 112 languages. Even among the 15 languages Resolve supports, Whisper often delivers more accurate results. When running CaptionCat's transcription for the first time, it will download the necessary Whisper components. These files are quite large, about 1.6 GB on macOS and nearly 3 GB on Windows. The Windows version is larger because it includes support for GPU acceleration. If you're using Windows and have a CUDA-enabled graphics card, Whisper transcription will run significantly faster. No matter which transcription method you use, the process is essentially a one-click operation. Just ensure the timeline containing your voice audio is open, then use the Resolve menu command or click the Transcribe Audio button in CaptionCat. However, both methods include a few settings you might want to tweak. For Resolve's transcription, you can leave the language set to Auto and the caption preset doesn't matter as CaptionCat's templates will be applied later. However, the maximum characters per line setting is important. I recommend setting it to one which forces Resolve to create a separate caption clip for each word. Larger values will result in fewer clips with multiple words in each one. This setting doesn't affect how much of the caption is visible at once in the final design, because you'll adjust that later in the caption cat templates, but it determines the granularity of the raw data. Separate clips for each word allow CaptionCat to precisely align the timing of individual words. With longer segments, CaptionCat can estimate word timings, but you'll lose the ability to control the exact timing of each word. The next option is Lines, which only determines how many lines appear in the intermediate subtitle track within Resolve. For CaptionCat, this track is just a starting point, and the final caption display, including the number of lines, will be configured later through the caption presets parameters. Therefore, you can leave this setting at single line without worry, as you'll have full control over the number of lines in the final output later in the CaptionCat preset. Finally, for gap between subtitles, I recommend setting it to zero. Gaps cause captions to disappear momentarily between words, which generally looks unappealing, especially for animated captions. If you use CaptionCat's transcription, this drop-down lets you choose how the subtitle clips are segmented – by individual words, sentences or a combination of both. For precise control over the timing of each word, I recommend setting this to Word. However, if you prefer working with longer segments, you can select Sentence. The Line, Word and Combined option offers a mix of both approaches by creating three subtitle tracks simultaneously. One with larger segments, one with individual word clips and one with larger segments where the current word is underlined. This combined option is useful if you plan to export your subtitles to an SRT file, for example. While SRT files don't support animations or design customizations, the underlined words can provide basic word-level highlighting within the SRT file. If your goal is to create animated captions with CaptionCat templates, avoid using subtitle tracks with underlined words as input. These tracks are not compatible with the templates and will cause errors. Instead, if you select the Line, Word and Combined option, ensure that you use the subtitle track with individual word clips when applying subtitles to your template. For more advanced transcription settings, you can click on Settings. 
Here you'll find a list of all supported languages, though it's usually best to leave it set to detect language. Keep in mind that the quality of the transcription may vary depending on the amount of training data available for each language. The min gap duration setting determines how long a pause between words must be for a gap to appear between their corresponding subtitle clips. For example, with a default of one second, no gap will be created for silences shorter than one second. The sentence options are relevant only if you've chosen to create subtitles as sentences instead of individual words. This setting applies sentence segmentation, favoring new clips at natural breakpoints like commas and periods, which can improve readability. The settings for the maximum number of lines and characters per line are not critical if you plan to use CaptionCat templates for the final result. These settings only affect how the content is arranged in the intermediate subtitle track. CaptionCat templates applied to the video track have their own layout mechanisms, which override these settings entirely. The beep sound option lets CaptionCat play a sound to notify you when the transcription is complete. Finally, there is the Translate to English option. This instructs Whisper to not only transcribe the spoken text, but also translate it into English in real time. Keep in mind that Whisper currently supports translation only to English, so translations into other languages are not possible at this time. Regardless of which transcription method you use, once the transcription is complete, you can select any subtitle clip and open the inspector panel. Here you'll find the transcribed text. If any corrections are needed, simply click on the text and make the necessary edits in the text box above. It's a good idea to proofread the transcription at this stage, but don't worry if you spot mistakes later. You can always return to the inspector and make changes. If you've already added CaptionCat templates to your timeline, keep in mind that these templates don't update automatically with changes made to the subtitles. To ensure your captions reflect the updated text, you'll need to reapply the subtitles after making any edits. One final note about the subtitle track. You're not limited to using transcription methods to create it. You can manually enter text or import SRT files, for example. CaptionCat works seamlessly with any subtitle track, regardless of how it was created. Once your subtitle track is ready, it's time to choose a CaptionCat template. In the Edit tab, you can find these in the Effects panel under Toolbox, Titles, CaptionCat. The templates are organized into categories for landscape and vertical and square videos. While all templates can adapt to any aspect ratio, so a landscape template will adjust when placed in a vertical timeline, the vertical and square templates come pre-optimized for these aspect ratios. Within the landscape and vertical and square categories, you'll find subcategories like 3D or news ticker, each containing multiple presets. I recommend browsing through these to find a design that suits your project. Hover over a template to preview it in the source monitor. Once you've chosen a template, simply drag and drop it into a video track in your timeline. You can then extend the in and out points to cover the section of the video where the caption should appear. If you want to vary the style over time, you can drag multiple templates into the timeline for different sections. By default, the template contains placeholder text. To replace it with the text from your subtitle track, select the appropriate subtitle track and the video track where your template is located then click Apply Subtitles. Once you've applied the subtitles, it's a good idea to disable the subtitle track to prevent it from being rendered in the viewer. This ensures that only the CaptionCat template is visible in your final video. Now let's fine-tune the template parameters. Select the template in the timeline and you'll find its adjustable settings in the Inspector panel. The available controls depend on the specific template, but most allow you to fully customize the appearance, including font, size, colors and more. Many templates also feature a text segment section, which lets you determine how much text appears at once. For example, you can set the number of lines and the maximum characters per line. The options Add Line Break at Dots and Add Line Break at Commas encourage CaptionCat to start a new segment after periods and commas. The larger the value, the more likely a new segment will start. For instance, a value of 70 means that CaptionCat will create a new segment even if it's up to 70% shorter than the maximum character limit per line. This default setting typically ensures excellent readability. 
Templates like WordFlurry, which display one word at a time, don't include controls for text segments as they are designed to show individual words sequentially. Even after applying the subtitles to the template, you can still edit and trim the caption clips. For example, let's add two cuts to this clip. If we select the middle section and adjust its position upward, you'll notice that only the placement of that specific part changes. However, keep in mind that if you move a clip in time, it will fall out of sync with the subtitle track. To resolve this, simply reapply the subtitles to the template. To force the end of a segment at a specific word, you can simply insert a one frame gap after that word in the subtitle track. When you reapply the titles, a new segment will start at the gap point. By default, no caption is visible during the gap frame. However, many templates include a parameter called Show During Gaps. If you enable this setting, CaptionCat will display the last text from before the gap, ensuring continuity. In the parameters of all templates, you'll also find the Social Media Safe Zones section. For example, if you're creating an Instagram Reel, simply select it from the drop-down. A black overlay will appear over your captions and you can adjust its visibility using the opacity slider. The black areas represent areas where social media apps like Instagram might display user interface elements such as a like button or the channel name. To ensure optimal visibility, make sure your captions stay outside these black areas. Keep in mind the exact position of the user interface elements can vary depending on multiple factors. For instance, some phones crop or zoom the video slightly. In certain cases, such as when a shopping link appears in an ad, much more of the video might be covered by text or user interface elements. The semi-transparent areas in the social media safe zones are usually free of user interface elements, but they might get covered in these specific situations, such as during advertisements or when links are displayed. Additionally, TikTok overlays up to four lines of video description on the video. So if you create a video for TikTok and it will have more than one line of description, avoid placing captions in these semi-transparent areas as well. Last but not least, before rendering your final video, ensure that the safe zone is set back to none, so the overlay won't be included in the final export. And that's it for this tutorial. As you can see, CaptionCat is super easy to use and highly flexible. And if you've got any more questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if you haven't tried CaptionCat yet, download it at ascripts.com. I'm Matthias from Amoworld.com. See you in the next tutorial.